Five tips to staying full. Intermittent fast, more water, 50% of your nutrition should be protein, eat, don't drink your calories, and track everything that goes into your mouth. What's up, Fit Fam? Coach RJ from www.fitclub.fit, the home of the belly burn. Tip number one is intermittent fast. But I don't ever want you to stuff, and I don't ever want you to starve. So if any time in your intermittent fasting you get dizzy, lightheaded, or you just can't function, I'd recommend to eat and give it another shot tomorrow. Try to extend it out by 30 minutes each day. Your ultimate goal is to get about 16 hours of fasting. So what does that mean? From 7 p.m., you're done eating any calories. And then you don't eat or drink another calorie until 11 a.m. the next day. But if in that time you're starving and you can't handle it, I'm telling you, just eat. Let's try again tomorrow. Intermittent fasting is a great way for your body to flush out the calories that you've already consumed and then your body will start to process fat. For more in-depth information on that, go to Fit Club Winnipeg on YouTube and look up intermittent fasting. Tip number two is to drink more water or zero calorie drinks. Now, I would tell you to drink water first thing in the morning. I drink one liter of full straight up lukewarm water. Now, the thing about your tank is it's like a gas tank. When your stomach is full, there's no signals to the brain telling you that it's hungry. And when you're not hungry, you're able to do your intermittent fasting longer. And the longer you intermittent fast, and if you throw an exercise routine or you go about your day, then it's perfect because then you're burning calories and you're gonna get yourself into that caloric deficit. When you get into that caloric deficit, your body's going to use fat as fuel. Now, if you need something tasty and sweet, then my first go-to would be coffee or tea with organic stevia. Don't forget, it has to be organic stevia, so it's guaranteed not to break your fast. Now, if you must, you can go into the zero calorie drinks such as EAAs, which is my go-to, multiple flavors, super tasty. You can also do your pre-workouts, which will minimally spike your insulin levels, which could minimally impact your fasting, but in the end, it's still zero calories, so you're still putting yourself into that caloric deficit. So tip number two is to drink more water. When it comes to your nutrition, I would tell you that 50% of your calories need to be protein. Protein actually burns more calories than any other nutrient out there when it comes to digestion. But also protein is a great way to keep your blood sugars low and it's a great way for you to feel your muscles for repair and regrowth. Now my question to you is, do you really need all those carbs? So if you're looking at a plate of pasta and you have your you know, one to two cups, and most people do more than that, but if you actually measured it out, you did one cup of pasta, then my recommendation for you is to do one cup of protein, whether it be pasta sauce with meat or pasta sauce, whatever it is, make sure that 50% of that plate is protein. Now, what most people do is they'll have two cups of pasta, they'll have two pieces of garlic bread, they'll have a giant Caesar salad, which has croutons, and it has that salad dressing, which is high in calories, and the croutons are high in carbs, and there's really no nourishment in lettuce and then they put a little bit of meat my recommendation if you're trying to shred down fat and you're trying to build muscle is that you match it one for one so if you don't know the calories of the pasta or the salad or the bread i'm going to tell you that you want to match it on the plate to be size for size okay so your plate might be smaller but honestly most of us don't really need to eat that much food in fact we're probably overeating which is why we're gaining three to five pounds like everybody else in this world every single year so if you don't want to be a statistic, step number three, keep it simple. 50% of that plate should be protein. Now this is a huge one. I want you to eat your calories and not drink your calories. When I do an assessment of most people's food and they write down what they eat in a day, most of them start their day off with some sort of coffee and some sort of carb. Most people are doing either just the coffee where they're adding like pumps of caramel, you know, two scoops of sugar, extra cream and they're like well i can't have my coffee without all these additives but the thing about all those additives is that they all add up now if you went into my fitness pal or even just google look google your favorite starbucks drink that you're drinking right now just google it how many calories are in my starbucks caramel macchiato and you're going to see that it's going to be anywhere from 380 to 480 calories whereas the most people that i work with they are good at eating a max of 15 to 1800 calories and so if you're getting 500 calories just from one coffee, now you match it with some type of bagel or fiber bran muffin, whatever it is, that's another 300 to 400 calories. You're already at 700 to 800 calories for the day. That means that half of your calories that you can eat in a day just came from that one little meal, which is totally not filling. And that's why you think that you don't eat much. 
is because the foods that you're eating are high calorie and they're providing no volume. And when you're drinking coffee, how the heck are you gonna drink water? And so your tank, like we talked about earlier, is not even close to being full. So then you get hungrier and hungrier and then you eat over what your body allows you to eat. So if you're at 1500 calories and you have a lunch and then you have some kind of snack and then you have a dinner and you go out to eat with somebody, boom, you're at like 2200 calories to 2500 calories a day. And so that would put you well over what your caloric allowance would be, which means that we're going to slowly, inch by inch, pound by pound, gain that three to five pounds like everybody else in this world does every single year. And the last tip, which is probably the most difficult tip, but literally takes you no time, and it's gonna slow you down from just eating everything in sight, is that you need to download a food tracker, and you need to go in there, and even if you don't know how much it weighs or what it's exactly called, just punch it in, watermelon one cup of watermelon and punch it in before you eat it. Now, if you eat over what you think that serving was, or if you eat something that wasn't plugged in first, get yourself into a habit of giving yourself a small punishment, okay? And that punishment for me is doing two burpees. I've done two burpees in the middle of church in my Sunday's finest, holding my coffee because you know why? I had a matcha latte, which has calories in it, and I took a sip of the matcha latte because I wanted to try it and didn't even think about it. I was so excited to have it. And I was like, oh no, I forgot to track it. Two burpees. Guess how many times after that I took a sip without tracking it? Never. So get your body used to, if you do something that you shouldn't do, then you need to do something that you don't want to do. So there we have it, FitFam. That's your five tips to staying full, intermittent fast, drink more water, 50% of your calories should be protein, eat, don't drink your calories, and track everything that goes into your mouth. Otherwise, it's two burpees. Now, if you're feeling like you need a quick refresh, I put together a 24-hour detox program for you to follow. Go to the description, click on the link provided, give your email, and I'll fire it right back to you. I'm Coach RJ of www.fitclub.fit, home of the belly burn, and we'll see you on the next video.